In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductionary offer. See the link in the description to sign up. It has become so ubiquitous these days that we're hardly surprised to see it anymore. But right in front of our eyes, or should we say right below the line, the nature of being a football fan has been changing. And nothing encapsulates that more than the ultimate debate in modern football fandom. Who's better, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? This year's Champions League group stage has paired Messi's Barcelona with Ronaldo's Juventus. It'll be the first time the two have faced each other since 2018, and it may also be the last time that they meet. To many, the question of who the better player is seems facile. Arguments about the relative talents of footballers have existed since football began. But two things are different now. One, the power of the internet and social media has changed how we support and follow the game. And two, no two players have ever managed to sustain elite levels of performance over such a long period of time. We live in a golden age of watching two of the best players ever spur each other on to almost superhuman heights. Take their respective records. Since making his Barcelona League debut in the 2004-2005 season, Messi has scored 635 goals in 734 games, winning 10 La Liga titles, 4 Champions Leagues, an Olympic gold medal and 6 Ballon d'Or. Since breaking through into the sporting club team in the 2002-03 season, Ronaldo has scored 641 goals in 852 matches for Manchester United, Real Madrid and now Juventus winning three Premier Leagues, two La Liga and two Serie A titles, as well as five Champions Leagues. He's won the Ballon d'Or five times. But ever since Ronaldo's 2009 move from Manchester United to Real Madrid, bringing Messi and Ronaldo into direct competition with each other in El Clasico, the rivalry has become something else. A social media war beyond club tribalism or nationalism. It was the latter, after all, that fueled the first modern player rivalry between Argentina's Maradona and Brazil's Pele. Check out almost any football post on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. Almost inevitably, the argument about who's the ultimate GOAT, Messi or Ronaldo, will begin. It's football's equivalent of Godwin's Law, an internet adage which has a very simple premise. An online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches one. And thus, below the line as any football discussion grows, the probability of an argument breaking out over Messi and Ronaldo also approaches one. And the level of engagement is unsurprising. The two are the most followed athletes on social media. Ronaldo has 240 million Instagram followers and is the most followed account after Instagram itself, 88.4 million on Twitter and 123 million likes on Facebook. Meanwhile, Messi has 167 million followers on Instagram, he isn't on Twitter, and 90 million followers on Facebook. And their reach is far wider than simply their home countries or even supporters of their clubs. Ronaldo has 200 million more followers than Juventus, Messi nearly 80 million more than Barcelona, with many more followers coming from Asia, Africa and the Middle East than Europe. And that isn't even counting the followers on Chinese social media and messaging apps like Weibo and WeChat. But it's the ferocity of the support that is surprising. The numbers and the rise of online gaming, especially the FIFA franchise, tell the story of the changing nature of support as younger fans invest their love, time and money in individual players rather than clubs. Social media now means that a follower no longer has to be fed information through the filter of a club or even to turn up regularly for a game. Instead, there is now a direct link, or at least the illusion of a direct link between them and their favourite player anywhere on the planet. As Forbes pointed out recently, 10 million more Instagram followers liked a photo Ronaldo posted of himself leaning against a Bugatti than of him lifting the Serie A trophy that he'd just won. Juventus can command a TV audience of 1.8 million people per game. That is less than 1% of Ronaldo's Instagram reach. Still, it's not all about Ronaldo. In Sports Pro's World's 50 Most Marketable Athletes, which measures an athlete's influence through relevance, reach, return and resonance, Messi narrowly came top ahead of Ronaldo in second, the Los Angeles Lakers' LeBron James in third and India's cricket captain Virat Kohli in fourth. But that level of reach doesn't just bring wealth or selling power for brands. It brings a certain kind of power too. It can help sell products or generate clicks, but there's a wider story to that influence. 
Of course, much has been written about how football clubs can be used as a soft power tool to manipulate and influence public opinion. But players have soft power too, which has been demonstrated during times of crisis for their favourite star. When Messi and his father were found guilty by a Spanish court of a 4.1 million euro tax fraud charge and each handed suspended prison sentences which were later converted into additional fines, there was an army of social media supporters ready to defend their player to the hilt. Messi's sentence was later reduced to a fine. Much the same happened with this summer's will-he-won't-he -he transfer saga about leaving Barcelona, where social media was flooded with support for Messi against his club. When in 2018 Ronaldo was accused of raping a woman in 2009 in a Las Vegas hotel room, an accusation which Ronaldo has always denied and an investigation which was subsequently dropped due to insufficient evidence, his supporters flooded the timeline of anyone who didn't show unwavering support for their man. At the very top of the social media pyramid, players like Messi and Ronaldo have become more influential than their clubs, with levels of support that have less in common with the sport and more with the kind of celebrity fandom encapsulated by Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner or Taylor Swift or K-pop band BTS. There is one important difference though. As with all sportsmen and women, their time in the game is limited. Both Messi and Ronaldo, however superhuman, are now reaching their twilight years. This Champions League meeting could well be their last. The 2022 World Cup in Qatar is likely to be their last World Cups too. Ronaldo, who's aiming to break Iranian striker Ali Day's long-time international scoring world record, will be 37 in 2022. Messi will be 35. And what then? There will be a huge gap in the game when they're gone. And those who will replace them is literally a billion dollar question. If you've been watching the Champions League this season, you should consider subscribing to The Athletic, where you'll get coverage you won't find anywhere else. Including Karl Anker's read on Twan Zabi's Mbappe tackle, Michael Cox and Tom Warville's long analytical read on Lionel Messi's career, and a host of writers including David Ornstein, Oli Kay, Daniel Taylor and Amy Lawrence, producing some of the best sports journalism work around. For just £1 per month as part of an introductory offer, you can subscribe today. So, use the link in the description and thanks for watching today's video.